I'm Michael Barres and I play Zach in the chorus line. I can't run to save my life. I can run 10 feet and I'm like, oh, my ankle, my knee. But I can ride a bike for forever. And it's been a while since I bought my last bike and I've got the hanker in, you know. I was terrified to do anything when I was a kid. I had a lot of talents, but I was really, I'm the baby in my family. And my mom saw that I was climbing things and spinning around and flipping around and it came very easily to me. It was in, certainly I had a natural predisposition for it. So she dragged me down to the local YMCA and kicking and screaming and got me into gymnastics class and two hours later I was like, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, it's how I learned to express myself because I didn't know how to do that any other way as a child. And um, I, I was good with words but only with certain people. Like with my mom I would talk a lot but basically socially I was, you know, nothing. And, um, and I learned to tell a story with my body through gymnastics and through diving and then through dance. So I used sort of act, learned my life in reverse. I took what I was doing on stage and eventually taught myself how to actually just be that way in my life. And I, for some reason I couldn't do that without it. <clears throat> and I think that's what really motivated me to stay in the business and to really pursue it as a career. I was told I would never ever make it because I had no turnout and I still have no turnout and I, <laughs> I couldn't really, you know, there was just some things that didn't come naturally to me, partly because I had a hip problem when I was a baby. I was born with, I was fully rotated in, I had like dysplasia, and, you know, <laughs> welcome to my hips. And um, I actually wore a metal brace between my feet when I was a baby. My mother recalls me banging it against her shins when I sat on her lap. And the idea was that if I had to walk on straight legs, it would deepen my hip sockets. And it kind of worked on the right side, but it didn't really work on the left side. So I can turn my right foot out, but it's very difficult for me to turn my left foot out physiologically. And, um, but all the gymnastics and all the, the dancing has really sort of helped the musculature support, support me. And I went to a Disney audition in Chicago with a bunch of friends and they were like, we're auditioning for Disney. And I was like, what do you mean? They said, they do shows there. I was like, what do you mean? I had no idea. So I went up kind of for moral support. I dressed like this. I had no dance clothes. They all got cut in 20 minutes and seven hours later after dancing barefoot in street clothes, the only song I knew was Miracle of Miracles from Fiddler on the Roof. So I sang that to the choreographer. I actually pulled her out onto the floor with me because I didn't know that that was inappropriate. I'm sure they gave me that job because they were like, we just got to see what's going to happen. Barefoot, idiot. Um, but I got the job and then I went to Disney for a while and, and then I, I really started to study hard when I was there. It was also the first time I was ever around like-minded people in many ways. So for me, it was really, that was, that was the first thing that ever really took me out of my social awkwardness and made me feel like I fit in and that I belonged and I really had a sense of community there. And um, it was, you know, I was a very, very good student and um, I didn't go to college, much to my father's chagrin, my parents really, but especially my dad because I was the one for sure that was gonna follow in the Ivy League footsteps and, and I just didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't wanna waste that kind of money and I was also frightened. And I found that once I started working at Disney, it had very much the same feel. It was a bunch of kids who were all college age, who most of us were living in the same apartment complex. We were all going to, instead of class together, we were going to work together. And I learned, I think, a lot of the same skills that many people learn when they're away at school. Um, but I also was training hard. I mean, I was doing the shows. In addition to that, I was also studying all day, every day. So it really was college for me. And, um, you know, when it's 100 degrees and 98% humidity and you're doing five shows a day in the sunshine in front of Cinderella's castle in polyester, <laughs> long sleeve, um, you learn how to work really hard. I flew to New York to take an audition, my first Broadway audition for Fiddler on the Roof. And I got the job. I mean, your first job, all you want is to get a job. You want to work on Broadway. And it's thrilling and it was fantastic. And then after two or three shows, once people know what you are as a commodity, you know, Michael is sort of Gene Kelly and he can tumble and he's masculine and that's his thing and that's what, he will ha well, that's what we'll hire him to do. If you have the courage and the perseverance and the talent, you will be able to break out of the box. I understand why producers want to say, you know, we, we want to use you in that capacity because we know it works. Um, and for some people, that's what they're happy to do. And for me, it was, it was important to break out of that. Gone are the days when Ethel Merman can step out on stage and sound exactly the same in every show and people will go crazy and she'll work for 50 years. That's not true anymore. And in the age of, I think, reality television has affected 
people's impression of the theater. They're much more demanding about reality and um, they're much more fickle. They get bored very easily. So I think being able to honor, and I, I'm a very complex personality. I'm, you know, total goofball and idiot. I'm also very shy. I'm also really aggressive. And, you know, being able to pick which parts of me I want to put out there for whatever show, in whatever capacity, I think that's really helped me a lot. Um, Kiss Me Kate was, you know, hard work, but it was thrilling. I mean, you know, when I did that number in the second act in Bianca, when I, you know, flipped and spun and twisted my way up the, the sets and flipped over the top, and there was always this bizarre vacuum of sound just for a split second, you know, like either gasps or dead silence, and then this, you know, roar, because people, I think they were just watching it like, what, what's happening? And then it was done and then they responded to it, so that was really exciting. I loved Piazza. Every single element of it had such depth and such integrity, and when you can look anywhere on stage at any character, whether they're the focus or not, and their life is very full, then you start to have that sort of transporting experience. And I, I felt like I was you know, able to contribute that way, so I was really proud of that. And there was nothing on, on the page, really, very little for my character on the page, so I, I really had to dig deep and craft relationships with everybody I came into contact with, so I was proud of that. A five, six, seven, eight. A Chorus Line was one of those shows that I could not believe. I never auditioned for it, I never saw it, and for the kind of work that I've done in my career, it was such an obvious choice for me. It was the kind of show that I should do, and I knew it. And I was sad that I had never done it, or never been available to do it. And so when I found out they were going to revive it, I sort of thought, oh, well, you know, I'm, the, the roles that I thought initially that I always wanted to play, I was sort of like, eh, I don't know if they're going to bring me in for that anymore. And then it suddenly occurred to me, I was like, oh, but... I'm finally, you know, old enough to play Zach. Charlotte and I look at each other sometimes across the stage <laughs> or across the dressing rooms and we kind of go, here we are, still doing it. I sit in the back row, yeah, and I have a little tiny table and a mic there and uh, the ushers often mistake me for someone trying to get to the bathroom when I come out there and they try to usher me out the door. <laughs> I sort of have to say, nope, I'm the, I'm the dude, it's okay, yeah, let me sit. Um, and people like to talk to me. I mean, it's a good sign. I think they get so engaged in the storytelling. They get really passionate. They start shouting things out. They'll turn around in their seats and they'll talk to me. And, you know, why, why, why don't you give it to her? This guy turned around the other night, right after music in the mirror, and he goes, Now give it to her, Zach! I really, really love this company. I love them all. And they are all so precious because they're all so unique and so specific. And um, they all care so much. And I get to really see that every night and, and participate in that with them. So I think that's really the best part about it for me is that I really, uh, I'm moved by them and I stay very connected to them because I get to, I get to really feel what they do every night. <laughs>